Hello everyone, welcome to another Edge OnSite knowledge base video. Today's video will cover navigating throughout the Edge OnSite application and focused on the view that you will see on almost every screen, all the settings, tools, and tricks of all the different views of the application. Please keep in mind that at some point throughout the video, I will be referring you to other videos inside of our knowledge base that go more in depth about certain features themselves or certain screens specifically. But today's video will be in depth and will be one of our longer videos. So thank you for watching and let's jump right into it. All right, so when you log in to the Edge OnSite application, this will be the first screen you see. So we did discuss this screen a little bit in step one out of our seven total steps for production tracking, which talks about loading a project, but uh, there's not too much going on on this screen, so I'll go ahead and review that quickly. What we see here is our project screen. We have our device and cloud sections. Cloud is where all the projects sit and that data is stored in the cloud and once you click load it's pulling it from that cloud to your local device in order for you to do your trackings and input data and then at the end of the day once you've uploaded all this data then you unload the project and send it back to the cloud similar uh, to checking out a bit in the edge estimator okay and so i have my walgreens project loaded here if i needed to find the different project i could click here and search by the id number or the name of the project ex itself if there's a new project that was added and I'm not seeing it, we do have a refresh button located here in the top right. And whenever you hit refresh, it's gonna pop up a processing window and then it'll be finished. And so that's really all there is to this screen. Again, here I'm able to click open and go inside the project or unload to send this project back to the cloud. What I'm gonna do is go ahead and tap open. And now we're gonna jump to the overview screen. So once you click open, this is the first screen that you see inside of a project. It's a very common screen and you can do a lot from here. So let's start from the top left. We have the name of the project. If we look below that, we have some information that we put in when we activated this project originally, which is the start date, the finish date, and then we have a unique project number that our system assigned it. So let's keep on moving. If we look below that, we see hours. So this information is coming from the edge estimator in terms of the estimated row. It's coming right from your estimate. Actual is the hours that you've inputted with the administration portal. And we do have a separate video on that as well. Please go see it that talks about how to input hours. Uh, here we see we do have 10 and I just wanted to demonstrate the calculation that happens. Estimated minus actual equals this remaining row here. And you can see the math that's being done. And then we do have a percentage of that in this little pinwheel under the usage header here. So if we keep on moving, we have an activities pane. So this is pretty useful. If you see here, and if I scroll through it, you can see a list of many different actions that I've executed with this program and it's date and time stamped. So anytime that you add a photo, upload a photo, track and upload some production, you're gonna get a line item in the activities pane that tells you exactly what you did. So it's a good way to check yourself and see if an action that you initiated actually executed. Okay, and that's really all activities is. Uh, you can't really do anything besides scroll through it and interact with it. Here you can see I updated a bunch of production. If I scroll down, you can see I created documents, modified tasks, and we're gonna cover you know, where all these different things are located inside the application. But that's what activities does for you, kind of gives you a reference point. Okay, and if we keep moving, we see we have a little weather pane in the top right. So this just matches up with the, uh, the location of your iPad, and we'll give you some quick weather insight there throughout the week. And underneath that is our production stats, and this is probably the most important part of the screen here. So we have a list of all of our codes coming over from the Edge Estimator. Now, these are set up like a typical user code, but these also can be set up to be phase codes, cost codes, account codes, however you have your code set up in the Edge Estimator, we can make it so that they transfer right over into Edge on site and they'll be listed right here. Regardless of exactly how your codes are set up, you know, numerically, alphabetically, the important part is you're seeing some stats about these codes. So here, if I take my finger and I tap where it says drywall finish labor, what I'm going to see is uh, the units of measurement inside this code. Okay, and I see that I have this code selected because there's a green box around it. And if I look to the bottom, I see drywall finish labor and I see some more information inside these breadcrumbs. And so I see how many total hours of work I have for drywall finish labor, how many hours I've actually inputted for that labor, and if I keep working at the rate I'm at, how many hours I've left over. 
right? And the percentage here is based on quantity completion. So if we want to get a picture of that, we can look at the units of measurement and say, okay, I've got about 4,500 square foot of finished labor. I've actually done about 1,068. And if I keep working at this rate, this is how many square foot I have remaining. And I can do the same for lineal footage. And so this is a great screen to come to if you've been tracking for a week or a couple of days and the next day or the next week you come inside the application just to remind yourself where you're at. Or if someone asks you a quick question, hey, where are we at on our interior hanging labor? You could pop it right open, say hey, we're about 20.5%, right? And you know that since you have 22% of the square footage, maybe you've got the hanging ceilings done, but you still got to do your hanging labor for a few partitions or something like that. And then we also have total production complete, which averages it across all the codes. So a good way to get quick insight into the project. Also in the top right of the screen, we have a refresh button. So what this is good for is when you upload some production, these production stats will update in real time. So if I were to track some quantities and upload my production, which is also covered in another video, and I sat here and kept hitting this refresh button, and I would see the percentages for these codes slowly update. And so if you're looking to see real-time information, the refresh button is great for that. Also, if you're waiting for a file to come into the application or a task list or something like that, which we'll cover soon, um, the refresh button is just a great way to refresh the project and make sure you have everything inside of it that you would need, okay? So that's everything pretty much for this screen. What we want to do is hit this button in the top left and take a look at what's housed inside of there. So if I hit this projects button under the general header, that'll take me back to my project screen. If I hit open, I'm back to overview. If I hit that button again, let's pop open settings and take a look at what's in there. So we have a couple different toggles here. We're going to talk about the first two mainly. Debugging enabled, leave this toggle on. That just means that whenever you produce an error with the application, it sends us an internal message so we can investigate. Open last project. That means that whatever project you had open last inside the application, the next time you open the app, that project is going to automatically be open and you'll be sitting on the overview screen that we're seeing in the background here. Now the rest of these settings from hide legend on down to count size, we're going to we're going to hold off on those for now. They are more relevant on a different screen and I promise we'll get to them. So let's come back to those. The only other thing worth mentioning in this settings pane is at the bottom, you can view the tutorial that we have set up for you if you'd like to do so. All right, so I'm gonna hit this green X and let's go ahead and keep moving here. And let's jump from overview to pages using this toolbar at the bottom here. That's how we're gonna navigate throughout the application. And here we go. So here is our pages tab. So here's our pages header at the top. We see we have the name of the project. We have the address of the project. We can search by a page name here if we'd like to. Here we have a list of all the sections and pages in this job. If there was more sections, I would see a second gray header that said section two. If I tap section one, it'll collapse all the pages inside of the section. If I tap section one again, it'll re-expand them. So I see a list of my pages, their page description, which is coming right from the edge. I see the estimated hours per page. I see actual hours that I've inputted for these pages and then a quantity completion percentage for these pages as well. So we're already getting some more micro level information. I also see a preview of the background image for this page coming from the edge, and it's an interactive carousel that I can just swipe with my finger here. Now, this screen is also where you download your pages to be able to track offline. We do have a whole video that covers how that works. Please see step two out of step seven for tracking production out in the field, and that covers downloading pages. Really helpful video. Um, for now, there's one other feature that I want to show you here, and it's called the long press feature, and it's, it's great for insight into information. So how we do that is if I take my finger and I press over where it says Camillus Wall and ACT for about three seconds, what that's going to do is pop up a screen that's very similar to my overview screen, except the information I'm seeing here is filtered for just the page that I did the long press on. So I'm seeing information for just this page right now. So this is a great way if a page represents a floor of your job or a certain part of a roof, just to get quick in this insight into that part of the job. So you see here, I have the same interactive production stats. I can select a code, see how many hours, I can look at the units of measurement inside it and check out my quantities. And it's essentially the same as the overview, just like I said, filtered for this page. So that's our long press feature, another way to get more micro level data. What we're gonna do is we are going to take our finger and we can either tap the background image or the name of the page. And let's jump inside one of these pages. And here we go. So this screen here is where you're going to track all of your quantities. Now we do have a video that covers, you know, getting 
deep into detail about how you should approach tracking production, please see step three out of seven for tracking quantities out in the field. We're gonna focus less on the tracking today and more about some of the little tools and tricks of this screen that you might not know about, okay? So let's see what we're looking at here. We've got the page name, the section name, the project name. We have estimated hours versus actual hours for this page. A list of codes on the left, and if you switch it here, you can see a list of conditions, okay? And if you tap these codes and conditions, you'll see the shapes that are associated with them. All right, so like I said, we're gonna focus a little less on that today. We will interact with it a little bit, but let's keep on moving down and let's look at the legend at the bottom left, something we haven't covered before. Now, this legend just gives you some interpretations for what the different colors inside the application mean. Uh, red would mean you have a shape selected. So if I come in here and I select a shape, it's gonna turn red and I'm gonna know that's the shape that I have selected and I'm marking production for, as we see in the top right here. And these shapes that have green indicate that I've marked completion for these shapes as we're accustomed to seeing before. And again, for information on how we got to this point, please see step three of tracking quantities out in the field. Um, and then let's talk a little bit about too, what we're seeing with these two different blue colors in the legend, right? So we see we have shape and multiple shapes. And what is the distinguish between these two colors here? So let's take a look, if we hit miscellaneous labor, let's focus in on these two by two columns right here, these little count condition placements. If I select one of these two by two columns and then I hit the production button in the top right, I can see there's only one labor item inside of this code for this shape. And so that's why it's represented by a light blue color. If I were to hit finish labor and select the same shape and then hit production in the top right, I see I have multiple labor items for this count condition, and there's multiple labor items inside finished labor. So that's what it's talking about when you see the dark blue versus the light blue. When you see the dark blue, it's indicating there's multiple labor items inside of this shape. Okay, so that's just to help you understand all these different colors. Now, if this legend doesn't matter to you, you can hit hide, and that'll make it disappear, and you can also tap show, and that will also make it disappear, okay? So now that we've looked at the legend, let's go ahead and move on over to the right side and let's focus on all the tools we have on the toolbar here. All right, so let's start with the icon on the bottom. So we do have a settings gear out on this screen as well. And if we tap that, that's where we're gonna see uh, the settings that we said we would cover at another point because they really are more relevant at this screen. So hide legend, this is the same as if you were to tap that hide button like we just did. If I turn that toggle on, if you look in the left hand corner, the legend is now hidden. And if I untoggle it, the legend is going to come right back. So let's keep on moving down. Percentage slider, we have one, five, and 10. So what does that do? Let's say I change this to 10. What that does is when I select a shape, like this partition here and hit production, and I'm going in there to use my production slider by percentage here, look at the increments that it moves in when I slide it, no matter where I go with my finger, it's only moving in increments of 10%. Now, if I were to go to my settings and change that back to five, when I do the same thing, now that slider's moving in increments of 5%. So you're able to control that. Keeping it on one is the way that you can enter in the most accurate percentages, but you can alter that to your own liking. So another setting that affects that window is this percentage or quantity toggle. So when we have it set at quantity, let's switch it over to percentage. And again, let's select a shape and hit production. And this is a feature that we know about if we've watched the video on tracking quantities. So if this looks unfamiliar, go ahead and circle over there. Uh, but we know that if we tap on the formula for total quantity for any given labor item, like this finish bottoms to 10 foot here, but take my finger and tap that, usually it lets us enter in a quantity that we wanna add, but here we're doing the same thing except adding a percentage, okay? So when I switch that toggle over, now if I come back in here and switch that to quantity and take myself back to my production window and tap the fraction, now I'm able to add a quantity, okay? So that's what I'm controlling with that setting right there. So we also have two controls for icon size and count size. Now I'm gonna set these both to extra large and so we can see what's going on here. So first thing, my icon size, if we take a look at this notes icon here, it's pretty large. If I come into my settings and I change my icon size to small, 
watch the screen refresh and now look at how tiny our notes icon is. So when we're referring to icons, we are talking about photo icons and notes icons, and you'll see how to place those in the video that we have for that as well. Um, but that's also the same thing that we're doing when we're controlling count size. So if we go into our settings and have our count size set to very large, if we select a count condition like two by two columns, look at how large these count placements are as opposed to if I were to set it to small and select my two by two columns. Now look at how tiny the shape is. So that's what we're controlling with count size and icon size, okay? And so that's all the settings inside the settings pane. So let's keep on moving and look at some of the other, some of the other icons here. So if we move up the list, we have this icon that looks like a stack of papers. What does that do? This is actually a really useful feature and it's called viewing materials by shape. So here I have some partitions selected. Let's go ahead and select one of these shapes. And now that it's turned red, I know I have it selected and let's hit this stack of papers looking button here. So what I'm seeing is a list of all the materials for this wall coming right from my edge estimate. I see the material description itself right from the edge, estimated quantity, the order quantity and how that translates. And if I were to select more than one wall, watch these numbers change because now I'm seeing data for all the shapes that I selected. So it also works by selecting more than one shape. Okay, and another thing to point out Let's say I have this wall selected and I come in here and I jump this to 50% and I mark some completion for it. So there I see my 50% shading and then I select that wall and I hit the stack of papers button again. So if you look, what we're seeing is this actual quantity column actually is basically telling us that since we marked 50% production, we also should be using about 50% of the material. And so if you do the math, these numbers, the actual quantity is about half the order quantity because I marked that half of this wall was done. And so that's the base level way we're, we're tracking materials right now. We do have plans to look at different ways in the future, but right now we're just giving you some insight based on the estimate. Here's kind of what you should be using. So we're gonna go in accordance with the production you enter for a given shape. And again, I just have one wall selected here that I marked 50% completion for. So you're gonna see 50% of 0.88 pails would be 0.44. Same, 50% of 8.22 pieces of FC board would be 4.11, okay? So that is materials by shape. And so the next feature we're gonna talk about is the measurement tool. So the measurement tool allows us to get a measurement from any two or more given points on the blueprint here. So if I tap that, what it wants me to do is place my finger in two points to calculate distance. So if I take my finger and I, you know, let's zoom in on this area here. If I take my finger and tap once on the bottom of this blueprint line and once on the top, I can see it gives me a distance of 20 feet and that's pretty accurate to what we see from the blueprint here. And let's say I tapped in the top corner here, then it would give me the area of this triangle, which is 98.32 square footage. And so you could also create a square if I were to tap a fourth time, but you can kind of get the, the notion of how this works. So we're basically just taking the scale that you entered into the edge and we're calculating the distance between the two placements. Okay, so that's our measurement tool. I'm gonna go ahead and tap it to make it disappear. And you might notice that our uh, stack of papers icon has disappeared. That's because we don't have any shapes pulled up right now. If I click a condition to pull up some shapes, you're gonna see that icon come right back, okay? Now let's talk about these three arrows and what these icons do. So uh, let's actually jump up a little bit to this arrow. That would be the undo, below that is the redo. So let's look at those first. If I just go ahead and select this large wall right here to the west. If I select that and I hit the undo button, it's gonna unselect that shape for me. And if I hit redo, it's gonna reselect that shape for me. And so that's it. That's really all the undo and redo are doing. It's just a useful way to move backwards and forwards between your actions. And the button below it uh, let me show you what that's about. That's called clear unsaved production. So let's say for this wall here, I tap it a second time, like we've seen in our tracking quantities video, I create my crosshair and I put about 25% on there, but I don't go into production and I don't save it. 
If I want to get rid of this because oh, maybe I marked the wrong wall or I see I'm on the wrong page or something, that's what I can do. If I tap this button, it's going to say, do you want to clear current unsaved production? And I can say yes. And there it goes. And then when I go out of that condition and back into it or a code, same way, that unsaved production is now going to be gone. It's going to get rid of it for me. Okay, so that's a cool little trick if you make a mistake. So that's undo, redo, and clear unsaved. Now above that, we have our, our notes and photo icon. Now we do have a separate video that covers those very in depth as well. So for those, I'm gonna refer you to our video on taking photos and adding notes. And that's part of our series out of our seven steps of production tracking. But please feel free to reach out with any questions. And so with that video in reference, we can now move up to our last icon at the top, which is our full screen icon. So if I tap that, it's gonna bring us to a full screen view. So it'll automatically hide the codes and conditions pane on the left, but you can make it appear again if you tap show. And there it is. And you can also make it hide again if you tap hide. And there you go. And then if you wanna exit full screen, you tap that icon again, and you're back to the screen that you're accustomed with, okay? So those are all the items on the toolbar. We've looked at all the settings. We've, we've dug into what the items in the legend mean a little bit. So we are good on this screen. We're gonna use the back button to maneuver out of here. And we're gonna keep moving along this pane on the bottom and let's jump to reports. Now here is my report screen. However, I am gonna reference you to a video again because we do have a video that goes into each and every one of these reports and kind of gives you a peek at them and shows you what you might see inside of them. I go over how this date range filter works and which reports are common and what appears in each one of them. So please go see our video on reports. Again, that'll be part of our seven steps of production tracking series. Just look for the one titled reports. Okay, so I'm gonna keep it moving and we're gonna move on to something we haven't talked about before, which is task lists. Okay, so we will have a separate video on task lists as well, but again, uh, it's not too much going on here, so I will offer a quick review at this screen. So as you'll see in our task video, tasks are added through the administration portal by office personnel, and they create list of checklist items to be checked off by uh, field personnel to say that certain items were accomplished. And so the, the completion of tasks by marking a checkbox communicates back and forth through the cloud with our administration portal and just offers some accountability, things like that. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Here I have two different task lists. Uh, we give you three different ways to create tasks. We do it per specific project. We have company-wide tasks like we see at the top that'll automatically be on every project that you activate for your company. And then we have task lists that you can assign to certain individuals with roles inside the company, okay? And then you can see uh, some tasks start on a certain date and end on a certain date, and you can make them active for certain days of the week. So right now for my company-wide responsibilities, I can't do anything because I would have to wait until Friday, and today is Tuesday. But below that, we do have a task list for this project and it's active every day. So let's take a look at what's inside of it. And I'll just tap my finger to check it out. So here I have a list of tasks right here and this was all created in the administration portal. If I wanna say that a task is done, I just tap my finger in the checkbox and that'll check that task as complete. And just by doing that, I've automatically sent it through the cloud and in the administration portal if they were to click into this task right now they would see this check mark and see that I completed the inspection of my site today and if I wanted to add a comment I could tap the little notes icon and add a comment and say needed some help or give any type of comment and again as soon as I uh, close my keyboard and go back to my normal list that comments being sent through the cloud automatically and so I can come in here and I can, I can mark off all the tasks as complete. We also give you a way to add a task to this list from the iPad. We can do that with this plus sign. So let's say we need to call a plumber. We just type in what our task is and click create. And now our task is there. It'll be seen in the portal and we can mark that as complete. Okay, and so that's task lists. Uh, they all are going to appear the same just with whatever tasks you have inside of them and they just might appear differently for certain projects based on how they were assigned. But that's a quick peek at the task manager. There's not too much else to it. So let's go ahead and keep moving and let's jump from task to our files manager. So you'll be a little bit familiar with this screen if you've watched our other videos on taking photos, adding notes, or purchase requests. This is a central location for all document types, uh, all image types that can be added either from the administration portal 
or the iPad. So it's two-way communication. We have a mix of everything in here. We have some PDFs. You can add Word documents, spreadsheets, uh, and you can also add a multitude of different image files, uh, PNGs, JPEGs, TIFF files are among the acceptable ones. Um, we should have your bases covered. And you'll see uh, there's a comment that's displayed here for each type of file. You have a date created and a user stamp. And if a uh, image was added directly to a page, you'll see which page it's coming from. So again, whether you take photos here with the iPad and make them appear in this files manager or you add them directly from the administration portal, this houses all your documents. So you could come here to look for submittals, for shop drawings, uh, specs here. So let's take a look at this Z100 PDF here. This will be a spec for a roof drain. If I take my finger and tap into it, it's going to pull up the roof drain here, and I have this spec available, and if I want to go back to my files manager, I just tap out. Okay. Uh, I mentioned purchase requests. If you've watched that video and are familiar with those, you'll see they automatically appear here whenever you create one. We do have spreadsheets that you can even bring in here. I just created a little base example here to show you what I'm talking about, but you can add in most document types to this files manager. Okay. And again, that's pretty much the basis of this screen. There's not much else to see here. So let's jump to our last screen of the day and go from files to materials. Okay. Now materials, what this is going to be is a list of all the materials for this project coming from the estimate. So it's not filtered by a page. It's not filtered in any way, shape or form. It's just a comprehensive list of all the materials on the job site. So if you just want to get acquainted and see what's supposed to be out there, make sure you've got everything. This is where you come to give that a check. You've got your estimated quantity and order quantity. So we saw that we can view the materials for a certain shape uh, at the production tracking screen. But here, this is just, like I said, a list of all the materials out on the job site. And the only other navigation you can do from here is if you click the top right for this clipboard icon, that is how you initiate a purchase request. Uh, but I will refer you to the video that covers purchase requests in depth. Uh, please let us know if you have any questions. These are all the screens that I wanted to go over today. Um, just to finish out the video, let's go ahead and go from materials to overview by just tapping overview. And let's hit the icon in the top left and we can go out to our project screen. One other thing to note is if you click this icon and there's some quantity that you've tracked, this daily production screen is where you go to upload your production. Okay, so this is also covered in another video called uploading production and notes. But just since we're talking about views and how to access places today, this is also where you come to view uh, where to uh, upload your, your production that you've tracked for that day. Okay, but to exit out of the project, if I click projects here, it'll take me back to my project screen. And once I have everything submitted, I would unload the project for the day and send it back to the cloud. And then the next day when I come into work, I'll load it up again and start my day of tracking. So I hope that helped you guys get comfortable with all the different screens and levels of the application, all the little nifty tricks and tools that you might have otherwise ignored if not shown. Please let me know if you have any questions and I hope our other videos are helpful for when you wanna get more in depth. Uh, hope you're out there tracking and, and doing well on these projects and everyone have a great day. Thank you.